Hey there, everyone. It's Mr. Lane here to introduce you to art from the prehistoric Asian. Take good notes and let's begin. Here's a trailer for the movie Choi, which is based on the culture that we will be studying. Prehistoric Asian Key Ideas The Cycladic civilization is known for producing small, geometric, figurative statues. The Minoans are known for complex palace architecture. And the Mycenaeans are known for citadels and vaulting techniques. Here's a list of key terms that you will learn about throughout the lecture. Here are the five artworks that we will study. Here are some maps that will show you some sites we will be visiting. For example, Gnosis, Mycenae, and the Cyclads. Before the Greeks, there were the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. The prehistoric Asian can be divided into three periods. The early Cycladic art from 3000 to 2000 BCE, which is the same time as Old Kingdom Egypt. The late Minoan art, 2000 to 1400 BCE, which is the same time as New Kingdom Egypt. And finally, the Mycenaean late Hellenic art, 1400 to 1200 BCE, which comprises mainland Greece. Myth and history in Asian art of the Bronze Age. This is text from Homer's Iliad, the first great work of Greek literature. Feel free to read over this. A continuation of the Iliad for you to read. The Aegean Age. This term emphasizes the geographical distribution of the cultures defined by the Aegean Sea, specifically the mainland that is today modern Greece, including the Peloponnesian Peninsula, the islands of the Cyclades, the islands of Crete, and the coastal lands of Asia Minor. It reminds us that the ancient cultures of this region were more often than not bound by ethnic, linguistic, and religious connections. Early Cycladic sculptures created marble figurines for placement in graves to accompany the dead into the afterlife. Figurine of a woman from Cyros, Cyclades, Greece, from around 2500 to 2300 BCE, made from marble and one foot six inch high. Schematic is a term that represents something simplified or symbolic, a form that is simplified or symbolic. Here you see large, simple, triangular shapes that dominate this sculpture. The women are seen with their arms folded across their abdomens, as you can see here. These were found both in graves and in settlements. They vary in height from a few inches to almost life size. We are not sure if the Cycladic figurines known today represent dead women or fertility figures or perhaps goddesses. The emphasis on the breast as well as the pubic area, where you see a slight swelling of the belly, may also suggest pregnancy. Male lyre player from Kairos, Cyclades, Greece, 
from around 2700 to 2500 BCE, made from marble and nine inches high. The term Cycladic means from small islands. This again was carved out of marble. The function possibly was to play music for the deceased in the afterlife because it was found in grave sites laid next to the dead. This is one of the more elaborate male figures. And most male figures, not females, were found with instruments. We're going to also describe this using the term schematized, where you see the flat planes, again, simplified. Very geometric shapes. You see a harp, a duck, bill ornamented, ornaments as decoration on the harp. And this one, if you can notice, is very small, only nine inches, and it may have been painted. Late Minoan art. The Minoans construct large administrative complexes with extensive fresco decoration during the second New Palace period on Crete. Restore view of the palace looking northwest, Knossos, Crete, Greece, from 1700 to 1370 BCE. This palace is connected with a mythological story. There was a queen who slept with a bull sent by Zeus, and they gave birth to what is known as a minotaur, a creature half man, half bull. King Minos was embarrassed, but did not want to kill the minotaur so he hid the monster in the labyrinth constructed at the Minoan palace of Gnosis, here. According to the myth, Minos was imprisoning his enemies in the labyrinth so that the Minotaur could eat them. The labyrinth was such a complicated construction that no one could ever find their way out alive. Here's a plan of the palace at Gnosis, and as you can see, it is complex and complicated. It had around 10 shrines, five theaters, elevated perhaps to three or more levels, depending on the terrain. And again, the maze-like plan inspired the mythological story of the Minotaur. Magazines is a room in the palace where the Minoans served wine, grain, oil, honey, and large jars, and you can see it on the map, number eight. Also try and see how would a visitor get from the entrance to the Queen's Megaron? What do you think? Stairwell in the residential quarter of the palace at Gnosis, Crete, Greece, 1700 to 1370 BCE. Here you see a restored version. The painted wood columns, which author Evans restored in cement at Gnosis, have distinctive capitals and shafts. The Minoan columns taper from top to bottom, the opposite of Egyptian and Greek columns. We have already learned about the post and lintel construction method back when we talked about Stonehenge. So here it is being used again. Bull leaping from the palace at Gnosis, Crete, Greece, 1500 BCE, fresco, two feet eight inches high, including the border. There's uncertainty about the function. It could be related to initiation or a fertility ritual we do see the Minoan ceremony of bull leaping. Two women are of lighter tone. You can see them on the left and right of the bull. And the man is of a darker tone. Same tradition as Egyptian art. The woman on the left grabs the horns of the bull. The man jumps over. And you, see, you can see the woman on the right has just landed. So we're seeing three different action poses. We also see the same composite-like views as Egypt, but some are straight profile. The figures are stylized. They have very small waist. 
You see an S-shaped curve to the bull and his tail. Overall, the composition have, has a sweeping movement to it. If you look at the ground, look carefully, you see their feet are not touching the ground. There's no ground line, they're floating. Mural paintings adorn the palaces at Knossos. Here we're going to look at a little bit closer detail of the fresco. The Minoans coated the rough fabric of their rubble walls with a fine white lime plaster and were apparently the first to use true fresco. That's a method in which the painter applies the pigments to the wall while the, wall is, while the plaster is still wet. They apply wet plaster and then they apply pigment on top of the wet plaster. The color consequently becomes chemically bonded to the plaster after it dries and it becomes permanent. The Minoan painters therefore had to execute their work rapidly in contrast to Egyptian practices which permitted slower, more deliberate work. Mycenaean art. This group, these are the forerunners of the Greeks, and it's located in the mainland area of Greece. Mycenaeans fashioned the oldest known large-scale sculptures in Greece. Mycenaean civilization also comes to an end with the destruction of their palace citadels around 1200 BCE. Minoan and Mycenaean neighbors or monsters. The Mycenaeans describe their neighbor just across the sea as a monstrous minotaur. Corbelled gallery in the walls of the citadel, Tyrans, Greece, from 1400 to 1200 BCE. These walls had an emphasis on defense. They were around 20 feet thick in some areas. The Cyclopean masonry was a method of stone construction named after the mythical Cyclopeds who used massive irregular blocks without mortar, characteristics of the Bronze Age fortifications of Tyrans and other Mycenaean sites. Corbelled arch. The vault is held in place only by the weight of the blocks often several tons on top of each other. By the smaller stones used as wedges and by the clay filling some of the empty spaces. This is the plan of the palace. Mycenaeans had to develop an independent solution for housing and protecting their kings and their families as well as attendants. Drawing of the Megaron at Tyrans, the most important element in the palace plan was the Megaron, known as a reception hall or throne room. It's where the Mycenaean king would reside. Exterior of the treasury of Atreus, looking west, Mycenae, Greece, from around 1300 to 1250 BCE. There are three definitions for us to define. Let's start with Tholos, which you see the image on the right. It's a tomb in the shape of a beehive. It's a barrier structure characterized by its dome. And it also has a circular plan to it. Dromos is a ceremonial walkway or passage leading up to the temple or tomb. You can see on the image on the left. Capstone is a large flat stone forming a roof over the chamber of a megalithic tomb. This piece, the exterior of the treasury, was misnamed during the Greco-Roman era. It does not actually hold any treasure or money. It functioned as a tomb. It has a long entranceway, as you can see, the dromos. It has Corbel vault interior. It was one of the larger 
largest interior dome spaces until the Romans. And you can see it has very precise cutting of the stones. This is our last slide to so take out some time to do a compare and contrast of these two images. Thanks for watching everyone. Never let your emotions overpower your intelligence. Drake.